Morning, Daniel. <coughs> Morning, uh, Margaret. Great that you're here to tell us about your new book, The Healing oh. Habit. Um, can you just say what the book's about? I suppose um, I do, I'm just so aware of the of the um, trouble of troubled minds in people and and our tendency to do negative thinking and for our lives to become quite unhappy as a result. And sometimes that can get more serious, I suppose, and then you're into the area of depression. And there are so many people do suffer from depression. And anything one can do to heal that is so important. Like most of our thinking actually is damaging us and we forget that too. So, um, um, and the amount of, um, of um, antidepressants being sold has doubled in the last 10 years. So it is becoming quite a threatening phenomenon and, um, and you have all kinds of, 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 um, of helps, I suppose, in books and blogs and apps um, and programs to help us somehow um, to, 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 to become more aware of the pattern of our thinking and the habits of our mind. Well, you just said there are a lot of that kind of thing about at the moment, aren't there? What yes. would make this one different than the others? Well, um, I mean, um, maybe not better, I don't know, because I have great regard for those self-help books. Some of them are quite excellent. But I suppose what I would be, I would be trying to add a, um, some more depth to it. Um, like, um, it, our, our habits of thinking, our negative um, uh, patterns are quite stubborn and difficult to dislodge and I'm not sure that you know like good intentions and um, willpower and white knuckle sort of efforts I'm not sure that they will get um, to the roots of, um, of of those patterns because like I said they are deep seated so I think we have, we have to reach for something deeper still within us some kind of awareness of um, of a higher power, like the um, AA 12-step program um, suggests, some kind of a spirituality would be a word I would use. That would be that we all have a spirit within us, we have a power within us, we have an invincible summer in the middle of our winters. And um, some people might call that God, others might call it, um, you know, different names and different images. But I just think that um, that we have to sometimes put our mind and heart and soul and body into the into this journey ahead for many people and that you and that some kind of inner spirit or powerful spirit or inner light um, um, is, 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 is vital for us to come through that journey people will make when they begin reading the healing habit that sounds really powerful could you give us some examples of how that happens, this changing in thinking, maybe from your own experience? Um, yes, I mean, things, I mean the awarenesses that would have helped me in my own um, struggles um, to keep the light in me and around me, um, because there is a kind of a sinister, almost sinister intrusion into our lives that brings a lot of disorder and sometimes chaos and sometimes maybe even despair. Um, one would be that somehow we can make a decision about this, we can make a choice about this. We forget that every morning we can make a choice to go down the road of light rather than the road of darkness. It's not as simple as it sounds um, because, um, because uh, it's not easy to discern that choice in a way. But like so many people that we admire, including uh, Pope Francis, they would talk about bigness and letting go of small stuff to choose. He calls it magnanimity. It's a big word, but I think it means like bigness in general. He would say to choose, to choose the big way, the letting go way, the overlooking way. That we don't need to be, um, we don't need to be wallowing in little hurts and so on and so forth. They're big at the time. They're not little, but if we can see them from a perspective. Uh, they are they are trivial, and we're better off without them. So to choose to go the way of light and the the road of of um, hope and um, new beginnings, especially every morning, that has helped me immensely. Good, good. Uh, any other 
Where do you see conflict? Well, there would be. There would be in terms of, of, of the thinking itself. One would be to begin to realise it's called the law of attraction. Mm. Again, Pope Francis talks quite a bit about attraction. And the law of attraction would mean that when we do set our our eyes and our the eyes of our hearts and um, on 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 this path of light, or when we do choose to to really make a, make a, a commitment to this, when we kind of watch our thinking and our awareness, and we visualize it and we have a passion for it and we desire it, that actually that does happen. Many would say that. that that has to happen. Um, it's a great, it's a, I think it's a great um, understanding to have that when we do get to change our patterns and our habits into positive ones and hopeful ones and, um, and, become, and, and have a confidence and a courage, then that, that's, that will happen for us. Mm. In, in a, it's a spiritual way, it's a, it's a daily way, it's, it's, it's the way of nature as well. And the opposite of that too would be true, that when we settle for less and when we wallow in our hearts and make a big fuss about trivial things and, um, and, and just lose, lose the vigilance that we need in our thinking to notice it and to spot it and to transform it, that we can go downhill from there as well. Mm. So that whatever we, we allow our mind um, to sort of... Um, uh, to, to guide us in that that will happen mm. um, and linked with that would be another question we could ask ourselves when we do begin to worry and we do begin to be anxious and we do exaggerate what the hurt is and we, 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 we um, maybe get the insult or something we remember from the past and we, and we panic a bit um, and we imagine things that you know, people are re rejecting us or ignoring us which hurts a lot because we are made to love and to be loved um, like to see, I simply ask, is this true? Is my interpretation of this event true? Is, am I certain that these people are rejecting me? And so forth. Because 99 times out of 100, they are not true. You know, because we are weak and because we are anxious and because we want to be loved and supported and, uh, and to have confidence, we tend to, um, to imagine the worst possible interpretation of things. And so that... And, and that can save us a lot of trouble just to, before we panic and before we let ourselves sink into some kind of negativity to say, but is this true? Is this really? Am I really interpreting this correctly? So there would be two, uh, two little um, uh, guidelines that, would have, that have been offered to people uh, and uh, have helped me as well. Um, that, that's really good. And I guess that... Um you don't use specifically religious language, do you? And yet the book is full of a kind of wisdom. Um, how can we get to that place of wisdom within us? Well, well, number one, the reason that I don't use specifically churchy terms or talk a lot about God as such, the whole thing, I think, is about the light and the spirit we call God. But for some reason, maybe the maleness of the Father God and sometimes because the church has hurt people, churchy language... Um, has been maybe rejected by them, I would try to use an alternative kind of language simply to remove any possible obstacles by people who are interested mm -hmm. in having a really healthy mind and a positive mind that brings a lot of joy to themselves and to others. Mm -hmm. So I would use words like, um, you know, the gracious mystery or mm -hmm. the mother of life or um, love itself or being itself, again, like the Pope uses, just, just to make sure that um, that nothing stops us or blocks us from this delicate, um, um, this delicate experience of, of healing our minds. Um, what was the last? Um, I was wondering how you got to this place of wisdom. Is this a daily practice or something? That well, you... I, I would say, first of all, I would say within us, deep within us, uh, uh, we have th that's the way we are meant to be, um, and I suppose it's a kind of wisdom to be aware of that. Um, but, but then, like in terms of more practical level, I'd be thinking of things like, like phrases I would use to myself, say that when we cannot change a situation, there are many situations we cannot change, mm. like our past, uh, things we are sorry we did, things we are afraid we'll do in the future, the fact that we're getting old and, and diminishing in many ways, those things we cannot change. And so I would say like the whole point of accepting these things is a huge relief. 
not a passive acceptance and say, well, you know, there's nothing I can do about this and you know, I just have to put up with this. That's true enough. But I would say, um, like, to, to accept it in, in, a, in, a, in a dynamic kind of way and stop trying to change what cannot be changed and work with that. And um, I, I find that tremendously liberating. Mm. And those kinds of things I would say to myself, like um, the, the, the way the habits of your thinking will become the way you live your life, that, mm. that our mind is supremely powerful. Um, most of our thinking is negative um, and most of our thinking is absolutely positive. Like the scriptures are full of that. You know, set your mind on what's beautiful, what's dignified. You know, keep your eyes on the on the light rather than the darkness. And all of those. So, the, so the place is teeming with lovely quotes and lovely strategies. And that's what I'm saying in a kind of a DIY way, um, which which is natural, which is kind of common sense in one way. Um, um, to to like to 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 be involved yes with all those apps and things you mentioned. But to have a, a richer, more powerful, you know, like the like to be able to say in the middle of my winter, and we can have a bit of winter every day, maybe, but in the middle of whenever I am in the cold and dark, uh, I find an invincible summer. That is to have that confidence and knowledge that however bad things get, somehow, with the help of that light and spirit, we can set them right again. Um, you, you started right at the beginning by talking about going deeper, and in our busy lives, you know, any suggestion for how we might find that deeper place as well as addressing our thinking? Mm. Um, I suppose, I suppose, one would be um, to notice the fear in our lives. Notice what's blocking us, and um, and and to be aware that fear is a very subtle kind of thing. And very often, you know, when you spell fear, F E A R, you know, false evidence appearing real. That can again lift a lot of mm. mists and even mountains of um, of stuff that could lead to depression, and also I would say that without um, using a probably a fairly kind of holy word like meditation, as well as mindfulness or contemplation, even that is when we that's when we stop and sit for at least five or ten minutes every day. People who are not religious at all or who are not into negative thinking, you know, middle-aged professional people, they know that without, that the only way of finding that kind of depth in the soul uh, is to sit and to try to stop thinking and, um, and just to be, just to be, to notice things maybe and to sink into that depth we all have. And when I say that, I remember um, a, a Kerry man, um, um, John Moriarty, who, who wrote many, many wonderful books and and very popular speaker and storyteller, died a few years ago, may he rest in peace. He, he wrote and he wanted it used at his funeral um, and a lot of people now just use it as a kind of a mantra, kind of a habit almost, every morning maybe and every evening maybe, or when they just sit down for that 10 minutes, it goes like this and you can see the depth in what he is saying. He says, Bright mornings, I suppose, like when we're free in our hearts, bright mornings bring the mountains to my doorstep, the mountains of life. Um, calm nights, when we're in, the, in those dark places, uh, give the rivers their say, the rivers of love, the rivers of life, the rivers of hope. Um, some evenings, the wind puts his hand on my shoulders, maybe the Holy Spirit. I stop thinking, I leave what I'm doing, and I go the soul's way. Beautiful way to end. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you.